Uh, I want to present an idea to you. I've been asked several times in the last month about prayer by other uh, Christian leaders and missionaries and pastors. And so I've compiled this little list, and I wanted to share it with you about why uh, prayer matters at times like this. So I came up with it seven, it's seven points, and then two sort of clarifications. So here they are. Number one, prayer opens me to the direction and flow of the universe. I think that's important because you don't want to be going against the tide that is pulling you. It's exhausting and it's counterproductive. If there is a lure in the universe, you want to be partnering with it. So that's number one. Number two, prayer binds my heart to the lives and realities of people in my community. One of the ways that I show solidarity and align myself with my neighbors is by praying for them because my heart is then open to the things that are on their heart so that I get outside of myself. So that's number two. Number three, prayer allows me to walk in the paths of those who have gone before me. You know, the saints throughout the centuries have walked through really difficult times and they have found prayer a great resource so I want to follow in that path that has been laid out for me. Number four, prayer contributes goodness and intention to the outcome of concern. Look, I don't know how you think the universe works, but if there is goodness in the world, then I want to pour all of my energy and intention into that pool of goodness in the hopes of opening up something good in the universe. Number five, prayer allows God's Holy Spirit to form, inform, and conform me to the divine image. Scripture talks a lot about us being conformed to the image of Christ. That's part of how that works, is that that spirit of Christ informs, forms me, and conforms me to that divine image. Number six, Prayer opens up moments or occasions to truth, beauty, and goodness in which the miraculous can happen. And when I say the miraculous, I mean that which exceeds your expectations. You could also trade out surprising for miraculous if that bothers you. So prayer opens up things to the surprising. There are amazing things that sometimes happen. It's not like an, a, a, an ATM machine that's a, a predictable formula. But amazing things do happen when we pray. Number seven, when we partner with the divine will in ways that lead to greater flourishing, both human and non-human prospering, we participate in a potentially transformative activity. This is how we partner with the good in the world. Part of it is through prayer. So I just want to throw in two caveats. There's an element of this thing I always talk about called phronesis. It's, phronesis is embodied wisdom or enacted knowledge. And my, my joke is if you ever taught a teenager to drive, they don't have phronesis. Everything that's happening with them is happening on the front register of their brain versus you can sometimes be driving <coughs> and you're daydreaming and somehow you just end up in your driveway. That's phronesis, it's down in your bones. But prayer is a part of the walk of faith, and we are formed by our prayer life. And so sometimes it happens almost in second nature or in a lower register that my heart is sort of having a conversation with the circumstances that I find myself in. That's my heart praying, this, literally the cells of my body, right? That's phronesis, is my heart sorting through what's going on in the world, and it doesn't always have to be with words or on the front lobe of my brain. The second thing I just want to throw out is this idea called habitus. Habitus is an old Greek word that means it's the character that's formed in you by your habits. And so the practice of prayer, as I see it, is a spiritual discipline, is because 
there's a character that's formed in me when I pray for others and give myself to the divine will. Jesus did this and asked us to do it. And so for me, that's pretty much, I'm good with prayer. So I have those seven things and those two clarifications. And now I would be interested to hear from you. Uh, how'd that sit with you? What do you think about that? Do you have anything to add or any thoughts? Well, this is a, a thing that I think about a lot um, with prayer is that it's a, it's an uh, exercise that mm. you do all the time so that in times of need, it is readily available to us. Um, I mentioned my aunt earlier. She says this thing that you have to remember something in order to remember it when you need it. Um, and so having prayer become a part of, of my physical, mental, emotional processing every single day means that when I need, it's, it's a member of my body. Um, and when I need it, I can remember it and, uh, and share it and be connected. So yeah, I think of prayer as a practice, that phronesis. Well, and the idea of practice, there's two ideas of practice. A doctor practices their profession, but also a musician practices constantly to be able to perform uh, uh, without having to think about it or to perform more automatically. And I think when you talk about spiritual practice, that's what it is. It's not just the execution of the, the career path, but it's the rep, uh, repetitive practicing so that we perform a certain way out of it. Yeah, it's like muscle memory, right? So there are activities. Some of you are, are musicians or artists. And if I were to pick up your instrument, it would take me 100, 200, 400 hours to get up to the place that the knowledge that you already have in your bones, that's phronesis. And so you, if, you're a, if you have a violin, you know how to hold it and where to put your elbow and how much pressure to apply with your wrist and how slowly to drag the bow across the strings. There's so many things, the placement of your fingers and so many things you know that I would have to be like totally focused to try and make happen, that's phronesis. And for me, that's part of the life of faith is that prayer becomes a muscle memory issue and it almost happens without us thinking about it. I think also some things like, uh, like the prayer chain that, that we have where um, when something comes up, we can send in a request and know that other people are joining with us, that feels very powerful in the moment like in in the moment of oh my gosh something's going on I can't I feel I can't do anything about this except pray to know that you have a community to call on and say I I need you to be with me in this and to know that there are people there standing with you in prayer is a very is powerful it's a comfort I agree um, absolutely with that, Sarah, that I think the most powerful part of prayer for me is knowing that there's a community joining with you and you're more together. Hate to say it, John, but um, I think the practice of medicine actually is like practicing the piano. We do it over and over and over again, but we're constantly learning new things. And there's part of it is that phonesis, like the ultrasound, you know, I know which way my hand goes to get this certain picture, but um, that's done by practice and practice. So, um, no, we don't have, we're still practicing coronavirus. I just wanted to say, uh, uh, we can come back to this in uh, overtime and uh, talk about this again, but I wanna honor the commitment that we've made to do this in about 35 minutes. So 